answer to the origin of life. To be scientific, the experiment must be, I want you to read this with me. To be scientific, it has to be number one, observable. Number two, statistical. Number three, repeatable. Let's do that again. In order for an experiment to be scientific, it has to be number one, you got to see it. You have to have witnesses to it. Number two, it must be, you got to have math involved. And number three, it must be, and it's, you have to do it the same way all the time. Evolution's attempt at explaining the origin of life fails in all three of these counts, as the figures I've just given you demonstrate. However, creation's explanation is scientific to the full degree. What do you mean? Watch this. Actually, Scripture surrounds the abiogenesis topic. What is abiogenesis? That's non-life to life. A is non. Biogenesis, life. Non-life to life. Scripture surrounds this topic of non-life to life with the mention of all the primary scientific disciplines. Acts 17, 24 says, God that made the world, the cosmos, the universe, that's cosmology, and all things therein, seeing that he's Lord of heaven, that's astronomy, and earth, that's geology, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, seeing he giveth or brings forth, that's a biogenesis. Wow, he brings forth to all life, and that's biology, and breath, that's physiology, and all things, that's husbandry, the support cast, and hath made of one blood of all nations of men, that's anthropology. Well, looks like the scripture knows a little bit about science, and it knows a lot about science. The Creator has stated and demonstrated His power and ability to sustain biological systems. I've made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power, Jeremiah 27, 5. He has absolute control of the elements. In order to do this, you're going to have to have control of the elements. Matthew 14 relates that at night on the Sea of Galilee, on the Sea of Galilee, the disciples were caught in a boat during a sudden storm. Jesus met them walking on the water in the midst of the tempest. How many of you can walk on water? Only Jesus has total control of the elements. The mystery of the potential to control all the elements and to create and sustain life is explained directly by the inherent power and energy of the Son of God. And we're going to demonstrate that in a moment. And it's in your study as well. Colossians 1, 16, 17 states that by Him, Jesus, were all things created, and by Him all things consist. That word consist in the Greek is sunisteo, strengthen or held together. He holds it all together. Hebrews 1 states, His Son, by whom also He made the worlds, upholding all things by the word of his power. That's pretty powerful. Watch. He has mastery over a biogenesis, that is life from non-life. In John chapter 2, at the marriage of Cana of Galilee, Jesus turned water to wine. In doing so, he instructed that water in organic chemical elements, what's water made of? H2O. Just hydrogen and oxygen, just inorganic compounds. It's real good, but it's, it's inorganic. In doing so, he instructed that water, inorganic chemical elements, be poured into the vessels. He then requested that the substance he instantly made, new wine, grape juice, with liquid enzymes and cells of fruit with intact DNA. They knew it wasn't just colored water. It was the real thing. That it should be taken to the governor of the feast. In this beginning of miracles, the creator performed the creation of a living substance from non-living elements as he did on day three in his direct mastery over physical phenomena. Hmm. In John chapter 9, he created living organs from non-living chemical elements. And next week I was supposed to be at the place Pool of Siloam. But this fall, I'm going to be there. By the way, our team was the only outside team we know of selected to help the Israeli archaeologist excavate the pool of Siloam where Jesus healed the man born blind. Our team. As soon as I finish this lecture, please go upstairs. 
on the far side, the last display, you'll see 12 pots, charred and burned. Please look at those. You'll see a photograph. Uh, November 2004, we'd been invited to excavate. You'll see a picture of Robert Summers, the world-famous artist who sculpted the John Wayne, the Byron Nelson, the Tom Landry, etc. He struck, and he struck a coin dating that destruction to the uh, destruction of the temple, that debris we were dealing in. I struck, I struck a mandible that had been ripped out of a jaw. It's, it's, the pictures are all up there. I turned, and Ron Pugh struck my photograph immediately, and it's, I just turned, and Ron just caught it that instant. His daughter, Kristen, is right back there. Wave, Kristen. Okay, it's his daughter. So it's memorialized up there. From that discovery, we knew not only that it was 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem, we knew exactly the day that it happened. It was the 9th of Av, 70 AD. The 9th of Av is the day of Jewish tragedy. First temple was destroyed the 9th of Av. Second temple was destroyed the 9th of Av. Their false messiah, Simon bar Kokhba, was killed the 9th of Av, 135 AD. 935 Jewish towns and villages were wiped up out. 600,000 men were killed. Wow, that's the day of terrible tragedy. So, back to the display. They knew that it was a massacre. So they continued to excavate. From those excavations, they then found the steps of ascent going from the Pool of Siloam, and we helped them excavate them, up to the temple site, but the Antiquities Authority and the Palestinian Authority stopped it early. They saw they were broken up. You'll see all of this in the photos. They then went lower, and they found the drain from the brazen altar was directly under those steps, marble steps of ascent. The first documentation in that drain, photographic documentation that was ever done in history, was done by David Lyons, who sits behind that door, recording all of this to put up on YouTube. Let's give David a hand. He's right there. In fact, the photograph that you'll see up there of, of that, that drain. It's only about that tall. So, the 10th Roman Legion soldiers running up and down those sacred steps heard, they went to Josephus, by the way, the scholars Eli Shukran and Roni Reich went to Josephus. They found that while the temple was burning, 3,000 young Jewish males got into that drain in peril of their lives at the brazen altar each held a pot with his food supply. They got into the drain, and in peril of their lives, they went down to try to escape the destruction. The drain's only about that tall, so they had to squat like that, pitch black. The 10th Roman Legion soldiers heard them shuffling underneath, broke the steps up, and you will see the steps broken up, poured hot oil on them, set them afire, and burned them alive. Terrible, terrible tragedy. On the 9th of Av, 70 AD. And because I was in on the original discovery that made that possible, they permitted us to have 12 of those pots that those young Jewish males were holding. Okay? Didn't intend to put that in the lesson, but hopefully I can finish this and you can go up and see it. 